Hey, Abnormal Family, how's everybody doing? Uh, I figured, you know what? We got a live tomorrow night for Thursday, and I thought, hey, let's do a double video drop for Thursday. First video dropping tomorrow at 3 p.m. Do not miss it. We had a special guest on our show. Vic Kunduf was on our show with me and Kurt, and that video will drop tomorrow at 3 o'clock p.m. Also, I'm dropping this video that I'm doing right now, which is going to drop at 3.30 p.m. tomorrow. And then tomorrow night at 8.45 Central Standard Time, we're going to do our live. So we hope to see you for all three. Um, another thing, I want to thank everybody for the Patreon. People joining the Patreon, I'm glad you all are uh, enjoying it. I put new pictures in daily as I receive them. I have a bunch more that's going to go in there. All my old video pictures and stuff. I'm going to try to pull those and eventually get them in there for conversation. I think we can have some really awesome conversations in there. And I may learn something from the photos that you all look at. Um, I'm doing a lot more boots on the ground coming up. And there will be a lot more photos added to it. It's going to make it a lot easier for you guys to be able to view the photos that we find. Instead of having to go through the videos and find the photos. They're just going to be accessible to you in the Patreon. The link will be in the description. Uh, the first one we're going to start off with is... William Ramsley certainly seemed like your average Londoner. He was married, had a daughter, and worked as a carpenter, but many claim Ramsey had a pretty unusual history with the paranormal. When Ramsey was nine, he was supposedly possessed by a spirit that gave him the strength and insane anger issues. In 1983, that malevolent spirit decided to come back. On one day in December, Ramsey was suddenly overcome by pain in his chest. Reports unexplained mysteries. Worried for his health, he rushed to the nearby Southend Hospital, and that's when the animal within took over. When Ramsey arrived at the ER, he grabbed a nurse and savagely bit her elbow. Luckily, a police officer and an intern managed to get Ramsey under control. Despite his insane strength, Ramsey was then sent to the mental hospital, but doctors couldn't find anything wrong with the carpenter aside the biting. Ed and Lorraine Warren, however, were sure Ramsey had been possessed by a wolf spirit. The Warrens were a well-known exorcist couple, recently made by a famous by the Conjuring movies, and they flew Ramsey out of the Connecticut where they summoned a team of spiritual professionals. Along with the Warrens, there was a renowned bishop, a paranormal expert, some reports, and up to six bodyguards in case things got hairy. As a bishop tried to drive out the werewolf, Ramsey rose up and nearly tore the holy man to shreds. Thankfully, the wolf spirit was exorcised just in time. According to the Warrens, Ramsey flew back to England and returned to a normal life. It reminds me of the Girl Scouts when I've done that. And I was speaking to Lisa and she said at these ritual fires that they had that they would summon a demon. And they would put the demon inside of the Gugway and that was how the Indians would control the Gugway. So that right there almost shows the transformation of people has to do with possession so always stay prayed up guys always stay prayed up uh, this one's called the zombie ghost clown one nine year old Oscar Mendoza and his brother were watching a parade in San Felipe Mexico when they heard an explosion via real ghost stories online somehow a clown car had crashed and all the clowns were now lying on the sidewalk at first Mendoza's brother thought it was a joke and he laughed at the surreal scene but as the brothers got closer, they realized it was no stunt, and all the clowns had been killed on impact. Minutes later, one of the clowns turned its head and creepily winked at Mendoza's brother. That night, Mendoza's brother was still freaked out, majorly regretting his decision to laugh at the clowns. Afraid of being alone, he asked his cousin to escort him into the kitchen so he could get some water. But when they opened the door, there was a bloody clown sitting at the kitchen table, the same clown they'd seen earlier that day. Terrified, the children slammed the door and tried their best to hold it shut. The wood began to splinter, and the clown hurled himself against the door. All the while, the ghost was whispering, or demon, Let me in, children. I just want to play. Don't laugh at me. Oscar Mendoza could hear the wood cracking, so he ran to the kitchen and threw his own weight against the door, helping to hold it shut. A fight then ensued between the clown and the family dog. Then just before Mendoza's granddad arrived with a shotgun the clown jumped out of the third story window onto the street below when Mendoza looked out the window the clown was gone after the police showed up the next morning they found black slime on the clown's chair the coughs into old Mendoza's grandfather to have a priest bless the house 
The Clowns was no burglar. It was some sort of demon, needless to say, the Mendoza family said. They never returned to his grandparents' home. And while few believe his horrifying tale, he continues to tell this story today. The uh, police did test the black slime. The black slime did come back as blood. So that makes you wonder if it wasn't just a connection to the clowns. Another clown that saw him laughing at his friends that were dead and he had come back to either teach him a lesson or maybe more if he would have got to him. Peter Stump, alternately spelled Stumps, S-U-T-S-T-U-M-P-F, or S-T-U-B-B-E, or S-T-U-P-P-E, was a mid-16th century German farmer who was executed on Halloween in 1589. Unfortunately, we only have one surviving account of what happened in the town of Bedburg that autumn, but it's detailed one. Rumors were circulating about a massive wolf-like creature seen prowling in the countryside at night with eyes great and large, which in the night sparkled light and two brands of fire. It was blamed for the deaths of livestock and reportedly people, so villagers started arming themselves, heading out at night to catch this creature. They eventually did, sort of. According to the story, they surrounded the creature at night in 1589, several years after the stories had started. When they advanced, they found only Stump and threatened him with torture unless he talked. He quickly confessed that he was the one terrorizing the countryside killing at least 15 people along the way. It had all started when he had made a pact with the devil at 12 years old. In exchange for his soul, Satan gave him a belt that allowed him to turn into a massive, bloodthirsty wolfman. The belt gave him all kinds of evil powers. In addition to the murders of livestock of the people, Stump was accused of taking demon mistress, eating his own son, whose mother was his own daughter, just to make things even weirder. Using his daytime activities to choose his next victim for his crimes, he was executed by breaking on the wheel, then beheaded. Tragically, his daughter and very uh, his wow, this is so weird. Tragically, his daughter and very human mistress were named as accomplices and were also executed. Just what was going on in the stump has been hotly debated, but there might be some truth to the rumors. While it is possible. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It is also possible that he was an actual serial killer possessed by the demon. It is also possible that he was suffering from some sort of mental illness and his life of a very unstable area plagued the real wolves led by his belief. But the one thing that people said that they cannot change is they chased a bipedal werewolf and when they arrived, it was Mr. Stump laying there naked. Wow. I thought y'all would really enjoy those stories. I want to do a double video drop tomorrow. Kirk right now guys is filming with Vic Kundiff they're doing I believe it's going to be an hour and a half film we will let you know the drop date on that and I will also be going to Vic Kundiff's uh, show looking very forward to that so we're going to have a lot of Vic Kundiff coming up uh, like I said Kirk's doing it today I'll be on his show at a later time and they'll all be released and we'll let you know when they're going to be released and everything so y'all can check them out we appreciate each and every one of you and until next time guys keep your head on a swivel don't be something's dinner and uh, pray that I can get Kaylee to go back out because I sure need some bait. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.